big day for the judiciary. Not only have we got that uh, list of eight potential candidates to become the new Chief Justice, we've also seen the beginning of Judicial Service Commission reruns. This is for various positions in the judiciary. And Justice Raymond Zondo is, of course, the acting Chief Justice, while Mohueng Mohueng is on long leave ahead of his retirement later this month. And he's presiding over that. The interview is rerun, of course, after KSAC challenged the constitutionality of the initial process. Well, our reporter Heidi Jarkos has spent her day listening to proceedings, and she joins us now. Hello, Heidi. So, uh, quite a lot on the go. Just give us the context and the background to the rerunning of these interviews, why they had to be rerun, and what are the positions for exactly? Yes, yeah, so this is quite an important day and an important week, Sally, given the fact that this is the start of the Judicial Service Commission interviews, and it's not just for um, two positions at the Constitutional Court, but a number of uh, courts across the country uh, that uh, vacancies need to be filled. But today specifically focuses on two positions that need to be filled at the Constitutional Court, and you highlight a very important point. Uh, the, um, the, the JSC had no other choice but to redo these interviews. These interviews were conducted in April, uh, but because of a court challenge and the questions raised around the conduct in which these interviews were held and the manner and line of questioning uh, in which uh, um, the, the judges and those being interviewed uh, by the commissioners, um, the line of questioning, we understand that the Johannesburg High Court decided uh, or rather ruled that there needs to be a redo of these interviews. So the JC had no other choice but to do this. Of course, in April it was chaired by uh, then um, Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng, and now we have acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo chairing this. So the positions are, of course, uh, for um, two positions on the Constitutional Court bench. Very important. We know it was six people being interviewed. It's currently number five uh, being interviewed, and we know that uh, Judge Pele decided not to come back, uh, and it's all got to do with uh, the conduct and manner in which she was questioned uh, during April. That, of course, has led to the redo of these interviews. Yeah, absolutely. And I did notice a little earlier that Julius Malema, who had posed some of those controversial questions um, in the initial set of interviews, was being um, quite robust in his questioning. Would you say there's quite a different tone? Has there been any controversy today? Yes, definitely a completely different tone, uh, Sally, compared to what we saw in April, where uh, you could also see a sense of uh, anxiety and nervousness from those being interviewed by the panel, by the commissioners this time around, because many of them did not know what to expect, given what happened uh, in April. But as you mentioned, Commissioner Julius Malema questioning uh, one of the advocates that is not a sitting judge, that actually, in fact, one of the only ones that's not a current sitting judge, um, uh, questioning him about, him about how, why he should be uh, placed in the constitutional court if he's not even a sitting judge and uh, the fact that he uh, is a white male uh, and how should that be perceived given uh, the need for transformation in the judiciary. But uh, it seems as though the panelists and those being interviewed try to handle it as best as possible and also the fact that many of them saying thank you for this time around it being done in a dignified manner and the questions not personal attacks on individuals. Talk to me about uh, what Judge uh, Mahube Beti Molamela had to say and why you found that quite in uh, interesting. Interesting, Sally, because she is uh, one of the black females that uh, was interviewed today and as I mentioned previously uh, there's a big need and uh, request and cry out if I can say for there to be transformation in the judiciary many say it's still very male dominated very white dominated and there's a need for uh, female representation on the judiciary what's interesting about um, uh, this particular judge is the fact that uh, she speaks about when she was still a lawyer how many people would sign sideline her and say that she should uh, not represent them because they don't feel comfortable being represented by a, f a, a female, a woman in the judiciary. So uh, many challenges, of course, being raised uh, about being a female, uh, but of course uh, this judge saying she will go forward and forge forward d despite the fact that there is still difficulties and discrimination. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to that. 
And I remember that on many occasions, uh, the clients would say, uh, but you are a woman. Are you sure you can, you can do what a man can do? And I said, yes, I'm qualified. Uh, but there were those stereotypes, and some actually would tell you point blank, I do not feel confident being represented by a woman. So, um, and, and I've, I, now with the benefit of, of hindsight, I know that uh, that is the one challenge that has been a hurdle in the careers of many women where you found yourself channeled to a particular field of law which is regarded as soft law. Uh, for example, maintenance matters, you know, divorces and so forth. And as a result, many women were not able to get exposure in commercial law and so forth. And at the end of the day, that is also what is responsible for the situation that we have had over many years where the judiciary was not representative in terms of gender, simply because the pool from which uh, uh, female judges could be appointed was very small. Yeah, and I think it's, it's an interesting point, bearing in mind that Daya Pele, uh, who is female, has now withdrawn uh, from this uh, the second time around, which is, which is a bit of a worry, bearing in mind that there are not enough women on the bench. Um, talk to me as well about Jodie Collip and what he had to say. Yeah, so Judge Collipan, uh, of course, um, speaking about his experience and his long-time experience being a judge, uh, of course the question was raised around his age as he will be turning 65 next year May and uh, the question was raised as to whether or not uh, he will consider staying on should he be uh, um, elected to be on the bench of the Constitutional Court. Uh, of course, him indicating that he is at the service of South Africans and wants to serve. Uh, of course, then he was also asked if he will continue serving thereafter if the need arises, him indicating he will definitely do so. Questions were also raised about the kind of qualities a Constitutional Court judge needs to have. Um, and we understand that uh, um, Judge uh, Colopin indicating that he believes he has those qualities and uh, the reason why qualities was raised in the first place, uh, Sally, is because of the line of questioning that happened in April's uh, interview process and how um, many felt as though there were personal attacks on individuals and, not, um, and, and the JSC not following the direct process of uh, interviewing and selecting a constitutional court judge. So uh, the reason why qualities uh, a constitutional court judge was raised was to treat really understand if those that are being nominated and interviewed and eventually shortlisted understand what they need to possess if they eventually do become constitutional court judges. Let's listen to Judge Colopin. I think the, the one, and probably the most important one, is to, is to understand the constitution, its location in our society, within its political, social and economic context, and the expectations that that constitution has created for the millions of our people. You, you need to understand that because ultimately that's what the constitutional project is about. Secondly, I think as, as a judge, you need to be humble and patient enough to listen, to allow yourself to be open to persuasion, to be able to persuade others to interrogate honestly and openly the arguments that are presented to you. And then finally, to be able to work in a spirit of collegiality with other colleagues, to work efficiently, to deliver your judgments timelessly, and to write judgments that do two things. One, that deal with the, with the dispute and deal with it properly and decisively. But secondly, and this might be somewhat contentious, to try in your judgments to articulate a proper understanding of the Constitution. 
All right, so Judge uh, Jody Collip, and then I was just watching uh, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo listening, and, and I'm just wondering how much pressure he is under, bearing in mind that he's just been given an extension because the team is battling at the State Capture Commission to pull everything together. This uh, seems like a lot more on his plate, having to listen in to these interviews as well, but I guess so it goes uh, in the pressurised world of the judiciary. Thank you very much for that update there, Heidi Jokos.